Hello, friends. As has become a bit of a tradition here on the podcast, listeners send me Christmas stories that they'd like me to read. And this year, I'll be reading The Elves and the Shoemaker by the Brothers Grimm. Previously, in episode 291, about at the 30-minute mark, I read How the Grinch Stole Christmas, and in episode 600, Twas the Night Before Christmas. Whether you celebrate Christmas, another holiday, or no holiday at all, I hope you enjoy this. I read this today for Isabel. The Elves and the Shoemaker by the Brothers Grimm A shoemaker, by no fault of his own, had become so poor that at last he had nothing left but leather for one pair of shoes. So in the evening, he cut out the shoes, which he wished to begin to make the next morning. And as he had a good conscience, he lay down quietly in his bed, commended himself to God, and fell asleep. In the morning, after he said his prayers and was just going to sit down to work, the two shoes stood quite finished on his table. He was astounded and knew not what to say to it, he took the shoes in his hands to observe them closer, and they were so neatly made that there was not one bad stitch in them, just as if they were intended as a masterpiece. Soon after, a buyer came in, and as the shoes pleased him so well, he paid more for them than was customary. And, with the money, the shoemaker was able to purchase leather for two pairs of shoes. He cut them out at night, and next morning was about to set to work with fresh courage, but he had no need to do so, for when he got up, they were already made, and buyers also were not wanting, who gave him money enough to buy leather for four pairs of shoes. The following morning, too, he found the four pairs made, and so it went on constantly. What he cut out in the evening was finished by the morning, so that he soon had his honest independence again and at last became a wealthy man. Now it befell that one evening, not long before Christmas, when the man had been cutting out, he said to his wife before going to bed, What think you if we were to stay up tonight to see who it is that lends us this helping hand? The woman liked the idea and lighted a candle. And then they hid themselves in a corner of the room, behind some clothes which were hanging up there, and watched. When it was midnight, two pretty little naked men came, sat down by the shoemaker's table, took all the work which was cut out before them, and began to stitch, and sew, and hammer so skillfully, and so quickly, with their little fingers, that the shoemaker could not turn away his eyes for astonishment. They did not stop until all was done, and stood finished on the table, and they ran quickly away. Next morning the woman said, The little men have made us rich, and we really must show that we are grateful for it. They run about so, and have nothing on, and must be cold. I'll tell thee what I'll do. I will make them little shirts, and coats, and vests, and trousers, and knit both of them a pair of stockings, and do thou too make them two little pairs of shoes. The man said, I shall be very glad to do it. And one night, when everything was ready, they laid their presents all together on the table instead of the cut-out work, and then concealed themselves to see how the little men would behave. At midnight, they came bounding in and wanted to get to work at once, but as they did not find any leather cut out, but only the pretty little articles of clothing, they were at first astonished, and then they showed intense delight. They dressed themselves with the greatest rapidity, putting the pretty clothes on, and singing. Now we are boys so fine to see, why should we longer cobblers be? Then they danced and skipped and leapt over chairs and benches, at last they danced out of doors. From that time forth, they came no more. But as long as the shoemaker lived, all went well with him, and all his undertakings prospered. I'd like to thank you all so much for listening for the last eight years, for supporting the show and sharing it with other people. I hope you have a peaceful and Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year. And as 2022 ends here on the podcast... I hope you're looking forward to 2023. I have a lot planned. We're going to start the year off strong with a lot of great content and just keep it going every week through 2023. And now with my children off at college and working, I might have a little extra time. Maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll take some time every week and do what I really want to do for Christmas, which would be record a Christmas carol. 
That's just going to take a lot of time, but I, w- I would love to try. My favorite uh, adaption of it is um, Patrick Stewart does an audio version of it that you should find. I would love to do that. I don't think I would do nearly as good a job as he did, but I still think I'd like to try one day. Marley was dead to begin with. There is no doubt whatever about that. The register of his burial was signed by the clergyman, the clerk, the undertaker, and the chief mourner. Scrooge signed it, and Scrooge's name was good upon change for anything he chose to put his hand to. Wouldn't that be fun? I would love to read that whole book. Anyway, would take a lot of time. If you don't want to hang out for this part, you can go now. I'm done. But I want to thank some people who are unknown to you, but I spend a lot of time with during the year. I don't want to use their first names, but um, first I want to start with Omnipod, uh, the company who has been buying ads on this podcast since early in 2015. They, um, They bought ads when, to be perfectly honest, no one was listening to the podcast, or at least not in any great numbers. And their support is in large part why the podcast exists the way it does now. Because in the very beginning, I didn't realize that, you know, the money it would take to buy equipment or the time it would take to make the podcast. And and not long after I started making it, I realized, I kind of realized when my wife was like, are you going to spend this much time on this thing? You should get a job. Um, Anyway, Omnipod was there from the beginning and they gave me money and bought ads, even though they weren't sure anybody would hear them. And they did that when I asked them to. And the only promise I made them was that I was going to try to help people with diabetes and that they could help me to do that. So to the people who I work with now from Omnipod and to the person who heard me the very first time in 2014 as I was pitching this idea, I really appreciate your time and your trust. I want to thank the people I work with at Dexcom Uh, They came along not soon after Omnipod and have been with me for a very long time. I think the next company that came on was Touched by Type 1, but they're not really a company, are they? They're an organization helping people with type 1 diabetes, and they just were trying to get the word out about themselves. After that, I tried so hard to get this one. The Contour Next One Blood Glucose Meter. Love this, love this, love this little meter. Um... And the people at Ascensia that I work with, Ascensia makes contour. You guys probably don't know that. But um, just like Insulate makes Omnipod. Actually, Dexcom makes Dexcom. Insulate makes Omnipod. Ascensia makes the contour next one. Xeris makes Givo Kypopen. Um, anyway. Oh, and Givo Kypopen. I, I work with some really cool people from there. I also work with great PR people from Dexcom who don't work at Dexcom. Um, same goes for Givoke and a number of other companies where I've just met some really wonderful people who um, help me help you again. They're not coming back next year, but InPen, I love talking about the InPen this year. I I think it's a terrific product. Um, Medtronic didn't want to keep going. I guess that's not true. I think they did want to keep going, but nobody at Medtronic could agree on where the money should come from. So I think it was one of those budget things where people are like, well, I don't want to pay for it. But anyway, um, I hope they come back one day. I love talking about InPen. Medtronic was great to work with. And my friend at Medtronic, uh, who I did all this with, uh, she and I just have the greatest time texting back and forth, and I'm going to miss her. Uh, Another one that came on this year, US Med. But this is one you don't know much about, probably, but they they bring you diabetes supplies or distributor, right? And, um, And they reached out to me about a year ago now, and they wanted to buy ads on the podcast. And um, they've just been wonderful to work with. I switched Arden's supply delivery to US Med. I've had nothing but good luck with it. And um, there's a person there that I'm thinking of specifically. And she's very, very supportive of what it is I'm trying to do. So just remember that the podcast is uh, its a lot of work. I usually put about 70 hours a week into it. And... Um, I couldn't do it, honestly, without these without these sponsors and without you guys clicking on their links and buying their stuff and and everything else. Anyway, oh, and uh, a new uh, new sponsor for 2023, Athletic Greens, right? Going to be talking more about AG1, which is a green drink I drink, 
And um, it's a great indicator of the, um, it's a great indicator of how the podcast is doing. When Athletic Greens reached out to me, I really thought, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm getting this somewhere. This is, this is working. I know that's weird, but um, Athletic Greens is, uh, it's one of those companies. They don't, they don't put ads on just anything. And um, not that the other companies do, but, you know, they're diabetes specific companies. So it's kind of a no brainer to put ads on this show. But Athletic Greens is, um, it's an indicator that the show is reaching a wide audience. And uh, I hope you guys take a look into that as the 2023 moves on. That's it. I'm not giving you links or anything like that. I just genuinely want to thank the people that I work with. There's, as I'm looking here, Omnipod, Dexcom, Contour, Gvoke, InPen, T1D Exchange, US Med, Athletic Greens, Touch by Type 1. I work with dozens of people behind the scenes, people you'll never meet who um, in private conversations with me are very supportive of helping people with diabetes. Now, before I go, I want to thank Jenny Smith. Jenny came on the show years ago as a guest and then came back as a guest and then was kind enough to make the Diabetes Pro Tip series with me. And our relationship personally and, and here on the podcast has just grown and grown over the years. And there is just no doubt that without her, the podcast just wouldn't be the same. I can't thank her enough. I love her. I think she's a wonderful person. Uh, The way she helps people with diabetes is inspiring. And the selflessness in which she gives herself to this show uh, means very, very much to me. So Merry Christmas to you, Jenny. And um, to the four people that helped me on the private Facebook group, I don't know if you want your names out there. One of them, of course, is Isabel, and the other three are just, they're magical. That, that group flourishes because of, of, of them being there. And I, I just can't thank them enough. It means, it means the world. Okay, I'm really going to go now. Thank you so much for listening. I'll be back very soon with another year of the Juicebox podcast. <laughs>